Hey everybody, Tim Bible here with Watson Realty, and welcome to another episode of your market update for this week. And this one's going to be a little different than most because we're going to dive a lot more into the national media and forecast that's been predicted and see how it's impacting the Orlando area. So I'm sure many of you have heard all the gloom out there with the market and the world ending, um, especially with the way the stock market was last week. A little scary, uh, interest rates being raised pretty aggressively. Well, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dive into all of that and then some. So get ready. Let me pull up my slide here for y'all. So as you see, looking at this, this is the stuff. If you open up a newspaper, this is what you're seeing. The stock market's crashing. We're in a recession. We have record setting inflation. Inflation is running rampant. Everything's out of control. Gas prices going up and down. And to throw it in there, we'll go ahead and throw it a nice little late September hurricane scare on the US, who we don't know where it's going to go yet. Maybe to Florida, maybe not. Um, stocks keep dropping last week. Uh, we've had days where Apple lost $10 in one day. Uh, Amazon's losing. Uh, Disney's losing. I mean, there's lots of crazy stuff going on out there. This is enough to make you worry about the future of the housing market. Rightfully so. I mean, all the economy is a little bit interconnected to a point, but let's talk a little bit about housing. So the root issue, what drives this house prices almost always is supply and demand. So get the demand for the houses, and you have the supply. If supply is too low, Prices go up, if supply is way too high, prices go down, point blank. Uh, and this is a quote taken from Dave Ramsey. Now, here's how inventory across the country has been looking. And this is in the thousands. As you can see in January, we're low, lower, and then we slowly started going up and then May seemed to be the turning point. I know we started to fill it near the end of May. Then we kind of skyrocketed up with inventory and what was happening was as the Fed was raising the rates and then eventually it impacted interest rates. The higher the interest rate goes up, the less buying power some people have. So it took some people that were in the market off. So, and then also at the same point, people worried about what's gonna happen, pushed them into the market and off the sidelines. So, and inventory increasing is still, it's a good thing because it gives buyers options. But the downside, really right now, there isn't a downside for the increase in inventory because it's good for everyone out there. Um, we still have a seller's market, especially in the Orlando area. So now showings are starting to show at a below last year's level. Um, and if you look at it, like we're slowly moving towards where we were pre-pandemic. So, but we are below last year's levels, which last year, anyone that was in real estate, whether you're on a buyer side, seller side, or a realtor, or in the industry, we are running with our heads cut off because everything was go, go, go. Now, here's some year over year comparisons. Active listings is up 26%, but showings is down 16.8%. This is what's causing you to see the market seem like it's shifting and homes are staying on the market a little longer. And that's fine. That's completely fine. Um, what I, we're also seeing where some people feel it's what's causing the market to crash, which it's not, is they're seeing price reductions. Doesn't matter about the price reduction because the market is still going up. What's happening is people are wanting to price their homes based off 2021 strategy and 2021 strategy does not work in 2022. It's important to price your house right instead of trying to get that little extra that 2021 was very forgiving in because 2022 ain't that forgiving when you overprice a home. So what's ahead? Now, I don't have a crystal ball, but we can go ahead and talk a little bit about what's in the future of our market. So... Right now, for 2022, these are the forecasts. Year over year, this is what they expect the increase to be. Across the board, pretty even about 10%. Okay? So, and right now, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing an easy 10% year over year. 
Now, Ivy Zellman projects US house prices will fall 4% in 2023, and then another 5% decline in 2024. Still not anything I would get worried about. Now, here are some of the projections. As you can tell, Zellman is the only one that's predicting in the red. Everyone else is predicting moderate. National Association of Realtors is 2.1%. 3.1% for MBA, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae are in the fours. Like realistically, I think three to five is probably a fair assessment for 2023. Now, here's a nice fun one because when everyone sees that the possible decrease in 2023, 2024 from Zellman, well, <coughs> historically, since Q1 of 1991, national average, 290% increase. What does that mean? You own your home, you're gonna win. This little decrease is just a bump in the road. It ain't gonna last. So nothing to worry about. And for those of you in my network in Florida, we're beating the national average. Florida's a hot spot. Now, here's a nice little information. Three reasons why prices probably won't crash. Solid underwriting. What that means, we have more qualified buyers. Part two, prices tend to be sticky downwards unless there are four sales. So foreclosures, short sales, it's gonna push you lower, but we have more qualified buyers. So it's happening. And then inventory is still historically low. So we're not up to a place where inventory is not low that would cause prices to go down for competition. Now, three numbers to remember. Oh. 41, <coughs> 12, 29.5. U.S. households own 41 trillion in owner occupied real estate, just over 12 trillion in debt. <coughs> And the remaining 29, well, you guessed it, it's equity. So with that amount of equity, we have options. It prevents a crash. <coughs> Homeowners had an average of $320,000 in inflation adjusted equity in their homes in Q2. Now here's a little bit of Central Florida. And this is taking the last three months, including the one we're in for the last two years. Well, for each year. So as you could tell, and these are solds, we are selling less homes the last three months of 2022. Now it's tough to say with September, September could see a little bit of a fluctuation of an increase over the last part of it. Chances are we might not because we could get some interruption due to the hurricane, but for the most part, we're pretty low compared to last year. Um, and it's been a gradual thing, but you know, that's because a lot of buyers are hesitant with the market, but it's something I wouldn't be hesitant of. This is an opportunity for buyers and still an opportunity for sellers. So here's some advice. For sellers, the market is still strong. To sell your home today, you just need to price it reasonably. You know, don't go crazy with the pricing. You could still get multiple offers if priced right. Um, and then you need to have a strong marketing plan. You know, back in 2021, 2020, I'm sure you heard it, people put it on the market and homes would sell. 
But if you don't market it to get the right exposure to get your home sold nowadays, you're going to struggle to find that offer and you're probably going to take less than you could have. So make sure you have the right marketing plan in place um, and make sure that you have a good pricing strategy that's going to get you that exposure. Now for buyers, this is your opportunity. It's time to shine. I know you could be frustrated, especially if you were in the market in the last year, year and a half. Um, and it still is a seller's market, but the days of losing offers to surprisingly high offers is in the past. Less likely to have $50,000 appraisal gaps or someone that's gonna pay 100K above an offer. Um, offers nowadays are not getting 35 offers, which is tough to compete with 35 different buyers. Is it possible to get two to three offers? Yes. So, but two to three offers, it's easier competition with the right strategy when you submit your offers. So this is a great opportunity for you. Now I know some of you are like, well, what if it crashes next year? Okay, even if it goes down a couple percent next year, it's gonna end up opening the door for more buyers to get in the market to go after these properties and will increase your competition. Get in now, you don't have to worry about that competition, but I don't foresee it going down. And besides, I've had people waiting for this crash since 2014. Guess what? They're still waiting and they could have bought the home for 200,000. Now they have to pay 400,000. So don't wait on the sidelines unless you're planning to sell in three months after you buy it. That could be a little risky, but if this is your home that you want to stay in for a little bit, you're going to be fine. So, and Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I would love to connect with you. Here's some information to connect with me. Uh, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. And I look forward to hearing from y'all. And outside of that, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And let's stay connected.